Hey there, Writer Rebels. Have you ever considered turning your written masterpieces into audiobooks? Well, join me today for some of the lessons I learned turning my book into audio using ACX. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. It's me, Scarlett Cole, and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about audiobooks, so I brought my handy dandy headphones. If you've been to my channel before, welcome back. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much. And if it's your first time, have a look around and hopefully you will enjoy your stay. Anyhow, if you haven't been here before, I am a young adult author, storyteller, and obviously an author tuber. And I talk on Thursdays about writing and publishing with an additional video here and there just to keep things interesting. Anyhow, today, as I said, we are going to talk about audiobooks and specifically audiobooks through ACX. Why am I going to be talking about audiobooks? Well, I recently put one of my novels into audiobooks. So if you've heard of any of my books before, it is the book Wicked Descent. It is a young adult paranormal and it has recently been released in audio back in April. So I wanted to kind of talk about what the options are out there for audiobooks and give you some of the advice from things that I have learned through creating a book through the ACX process. All right, so there are various different companies out there that will do audiobooks. You can actually sell your rights to companies like Tantor and various other ones where they will do all of the audiobook stuff for you and you'll be paid essentially a royalty just like you were selling a book to a big publisher. However, if you are in more of the indie market or if you have gone with a small press, you may have maintained your audio rights, giving you the right to create audiobooks yourself and therefore becoming the publisher of that audiobook. This is what I've done in this case because this book in particular is actually a Ever 19 book, but I did maintain my audio rights. So I have the right to create an audiobook because that's not the market that Ever 19 is in. So audiobooks have gained a lot of popularity over the last little while and more and more companies keep coming out with producing audiobooks and being able to get your books into audio on the market. One of the biggest ones there is, is ACX and this is owned through Amazon. Obviously most of you out there have probably heard of Amazon before as they are a little bit of a bigger company. There are also options such as Find Away Voices, which also seems to be very popular and many, many others if you threw a search into Google, I'm sure you will find an absolute ton of them out there. There's generally about three ways that you can go about making an audiobook, and that is either paying by the hour, which can be anywhere between $100 to $300, depending on which narrator you want to have narrate your story. You can do something called a royalty share, which is what I did, and essentially I didn't put any money up front, but my narrator will get a portion of the proceeds of my book for, I believe it's seven years through ACX, or you can do something called a, I believe it's called a royalty share plus through ACX. Find Away Voices also has this option as well, even though they don't have a full royalty share. And that's basically you would pay a flat fee or a reduced rate per hour, and your narrator would still get a portion of your proceeds for a limited amount of time. This amount is usually a little bit less than a 50-50 split like in royalty share, but can make those costs a little bit easier. From my understanding, the only one that does a straight up royalty share is ACX, but Find Away Voices now does a kind of royalty share hybrid model and then a full paid model. ACX does all three of those and some of most of the other companies out there will be a paid per hour service. Which one should you do? Well, obviously this is going to be up to the individual. If you do not have the funds to be putting into an audiobook, then that could be a definite hindrance. If you're paying $150 to $250 an hour and you write considerably longer books, then obviously this cost is going to rack up very, very fast. So you could be looking anywhere between $2,500 to $3,000 for the production of an audiobook. However, this is a booming market, so maybe you're going to be making that money back right away. But if you don't have that cash to front it, then it's going to be a problem. Royalty share can be a great option for those people just wanting to dabble into audiobooks or who don't have the capital to start out with. That way they can 
kind of get their toe out there, see what it's like and try out the process. The problem with that is that you are exclusive to ACX, which means your audiobooks are only available through Amazon and iTunes, and they can't be provided on say Kobo or I believe the Chirp program through BookBub or anything like that. Similar to Kindle Unlimited, you are restricted to staying with Amazon. Whereas if you go through another company like Findaway or something else, you are allowed to go wide with your audiobooks. However, you will get a smaller royalty on the Amazon platform because they obviously are going to favor those people that are using the ACX system. Regardless of the method you choose, you obviously need to pick something that's right for you and your pocketbook when you jump into audio. Some other considerations are if this is a series, are you going to be able to have the same narrator all the way through? If you're paying, it might be a little bit easier to maintain that narrator. If you are doing a royalty share, it might be a little bit more difficult as they might be not willing to go on to a second book if the first book didn't sell very well. However, if you get them all done at the same time, then it could work out really, really well. You are going to have to play with some of those things. And my advice here specifically, I did the full royalty share option. So the things that I learned through this process are obviously going to be leaning towards more of the royalty share. Anything that I know for a fact is going to be different on a paid side, then I will try to note that whenever possible, but make sure that you are aware that all of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today is based on the royalty share program. All right, so having a book in audio was really, really exciting. It was super cool to hear somebody say these words that I had written and with passion and conviction and all of that great stuff that a paid or professional actor can do very, very well and I cannot. There are some people who do voice their own audiobooks, but that is something that I'm not really interested in, nor do I have the equipment to do it. And I feel like I would probably talk way too fast for anybody anyway. So I did go into royalty share. I specifically picked royalty share because I knew the book was a standalone. So I wasn't going to get into an issue with the series and having to continue it. I wanted to try it out because I didn't really know much about audio. I didn't really know about how that worked and what to do. So I did want to kind of give it a try without spending a huge amount of money on something that I didn't know if it was going to work. Obviously, I'm still in the process of finding out if it's working. There are sales, it is selling, so that is positive, but I don't know exactly how it's going to work out yet because it's still relatively new. But through the process, I have learned several things and hopefully they will help you out regardless of what path you take. All right, so the first thing that I learned is that you need to do your research. A lot of people out there, and myself included, think that once you get into ACX or something like that, you're going to basically throw your book up for auditions, your narrator is just going to magically appear and they're going to audition for your book and it's gonna be wonderful and you're off to the races. Well, it's really not that simple. There are people that will audition as soon as your book is put up, but they may not necessarily be the right voice for you. How do you even know what the right voice is? If you've been working in a written medium, you might not really know what's out there for audiobooks or how things should sound. So I had to spend a lot of time listening to different snippets of various different narrators. I had to listen to actual audiobooks that are out there on the market. I had to ask people what kind of narrators they liked and which ones were really good and what they did and did not like in a narrator. Just because I like the sound of someone's voice doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to make a good audiobook that people are going to be able to listen to and follow and enjoy. Fortunately, I have had really good reviews saying that the narrator is a great fit for Avery, which is my main character in Wicked Descent. So I feel like I've made a good decision, but it wasn't that simple. I did go through a ton of different samples from various different narrators. And Chloe Parks, who is the person that is narrating my audiobook, she was not somebody who auditioned for the role either. I actually sought her out and asked her to audition for me because I really liked her voice and I felt that it was going to be a good fit. By doing that extra step and having the extra research behind me, I felt positive with the project that it was going to go very well because I had done the research and I had spent that time to find out what makes a good audiobook. If you don't do that, you may get auditions from someone just accept anything that comes along and you're not going to get as good reviews or as great 
sell through for your audiobook because it's not done properly. When you are in royalty share, a lot of those narrators are just building their portfolios or they're just trying to get into that audiobook game. So it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody there is going to be the perfect fit or it might not be the perfect fit for your book. They might be a great audiobook actor, but if you are writing young adults and they sound like a seven year old man, it's probably not going to be a good fit or maybe it's going to be too sultry for the sweet, clean romance that you're writing, or maybe not sultry enough if you are writing something that is a little steamier. So you have to see what's kind of out there, hear the different voices and do your research before you jump into it. I didn't expect that I was going to be spending all of these hours looking through all of these different narrators, but I feel like it paid off in the end and it was totally worth my time. Even if you are going the paid route, if you are going to be investing a lot of money into somebody, you wanna make sure that they're going to do a good job and not even just a good fit for the book, but a good fit for you and that you're gonna have a positive working relationship. Just imagine if you're going to be shelling out two to $3,000 for a book and it doesn't come out the way that you want it to. This is going to be a problem for you. So I would suggest doing your research and making sure you spend that time up front to get somebody that you really, really want. The next lesson I learned about audiobooks is that they take a lot longer than you think they're going to. So this is actually kind of threefold. First off, getting an actor. I was one of those people who thought I would put my book up and all of a sudden I would have a flurry of auditions for my book. Well, it doesn't really happen that fast. Sometimes it will if you have a very good selling book, then it is quite possible that people are going to be flocking to do your book. But if you have just put it up for audition, there are a lot of books out there that are looking to be produced. So it is possible you could be waiting a long period of time for that actor, as well as they, if you are doing a full royalty share, there are agreements and stuff in place and deadlines and all that sort of stuff. But there's a lot of people out there that I know that those deadlines have passed and their producers have been late. It's just like writing your book. Obviously you wanna hit every deadline that you have, but sometimes that gets difficult and producers have lives and they have all of these things that they have going on during the day and other projects that they're trying to balance. So if they are being paid for one project and they're just splitting royalties with you for another, you might fall to the bottom of that list and things might take a little bit longer than you expected. Even though you've set a deadline, they might be fantastic and meet that and there isn't a problem, but there is a possibility that they won't and that can really put you right back to square one or you need to wait for those people. The second thing that can take a long time and took a lot longer than I expected to was getting approved. As audiobooks are becoming more popular, it is taking a lot longer for ACX to approve their audiobooks. Originally, they were saying they would be done within 14 days. I think the terms of service now are 30 business days, so that's longer than an actual month. And I know some people who have been waiting even longer for that. Granted, we are in a COVID state right now, so maybe that will get a little bit better as restrictions start to open up when the virus passes. But even before that was happening, times were starting to extend and you were starting to hear that from other authors online. So even though you've gone through everything, you've reviewed it and you upload it, Amazon still needs to review that audiobook, make sure that it's okay and get it out onto their platforms. That can take a lot longer than you think and can also be very frustrating if you think you're done and it's still almost two months until you actually see that audiobook for sale. When you are making plans for audiobooks, you need to make sure that it's going to be out either when you want it to or give yourself enough lead time that it's not going to matter. My book had already been out for a while, so for me, an audiobook was just a bonus. But if you are trying to match that up with the release of a paperback and ebook, this can be a lot more difficult to do considering the amount of time that you need to wait for an approval. And you're probably not going to be given any sort of information on when that's actually going to be approved. You will just get an email when it's done and that's it. The third thing that's going to take you a lot more time than you probably think is reviewing the book yourself. Yes, the narrator is going to finish it, but the fact is you're gonna to wanna to look at it. You're going to want to listen to the entire audiobook and make sure that there's no corrections or issues that need to be dealt with. I figured this wasn't going to take very long, but it actually does. My book is nearly 10 hours in length. I figured I could sit down on a Saturday, listen to those 10 hours, and I was gonna be good to go. Well, it did take a little bit longer than that, but I do have some rule of me doing some of the reviewing, so here we are.
listening to my computer, to my narrator's voice, and I'm following along with my book. This is where it gets very, very exhausting. So when you are listening to an audiobook, normally you're just listening to the audio. You're enjoying it. You're enjoying it for what it is. When you are proofing audio, you need to follow along to the book and make sure that everything is done the way that it needs to be done and there aren't any issues that need to be addressed. While you're doing that, it takes a little bit more brain power, I find, than just listening to an audiobook. If you're really good at it, then yes, maybe you can sit there for 10 hours and listen to someone read your book. I found that I couldn't do it. I had expected to knock it out in a day and it actually took me several days to do it because I could really only do maybe two or three hours at a time maximum until I either stopped paying attention and not following along like I needed to, or I wasn't even listening to the words anymore and completely zoned out. This is not what you want to be doing when you're proofing because you want to make sure that everything follows up properly. So I would need to take breaks. It took me nearly a week between work and kids and all of that sort of stuff to get it proofed. And it wasn't perfect the first time. Narrators and producers are human. They are going to make errors. There are certain things that you aren't going to like that they're going to need to fix. And that takes time for them to go back and fix that and send that back again. You do have the option to make I believe two rounds of changes. So you want to make sure that you do it properly. But once you send it back to them, you're waiting again until it comes back and then you're going to need to re-listen to that again. So that process can take a lot longer than you think it's going to. Speaking of making changes, the other thing I learned about ACX is that it's a collaboration, especially when you are doing royalty share. Obviously somebody is taking your book and interpreting it as they would read it. Sometimes you will have misreads. Sometimes they will not have a character voice appropriate to what you had expected. So this is where you get into figuring out what is the hills that you want to die on. When I went through all of my proofing, I sat there with a notebook and I wrote down every single thing that I'd want to change, including any misreads, anything like that. And then when I got to the end of it, I decided whether or not it was worth it to go back to the narrator or fix it. Obviously, if you are paying per hour, you probably have a little bit more clout to do that. But when you're doing a full royalty share, these people are putting all that time in up front for no pay. So just as you are writing and putting out your book for no pay until that book comes out, you can obviously understand that going back to make every little fix is going to be a little bit more difficult. Also, if you've done a character voice the same all the way through a book, and it isn't exactly what you wanted, well, they have the right to do that interpretation and you have hired them to do that job. If it is completely off the mark, then maybe you guys can figure something out. But if you're having them change an entire book, that can be definitely a problem. There are some ways that you can alleviate this, mind you. And one of the suggestions that I got after my book was finished was to have your narrator upload chapter by chapter or in blocks so that you're not reviewing the entire thing at the end. This will save you some time as it will allow you to review in two to three hour blocks instead of feeling like you need to sit there for 10 to 12 hours to review. Plus it allows you to address any errors as they come up before they've recorded anymore. The other thing I would definitely suggest is when you put up an audition script to make sure that you are including any necessary voices that you need. For instance, in Wicked Descent, I have two teenage boys that are very important to the plot. However, they don't generally appear till much later in the book, or at least not in the first couple of chapters. So I wanted to make sure that those voices were distinct and separate and that they were being interpreted properly. So I made sure for the audition, I picked a scene that's going to have those two characters speaking together so I could see which voices she picked to have those in and gave her proper descriptions of who each character was. My narrator did a fantastic job and I was very, very happy with it. However, I know people who have had a character that shows up later in their book that they did not have in the audition script and the narrator has interpreted that voice very differently than the author would have expected. There are some options, either you need to accept it that this is something that they've done or you need to go back and forth with that narrator. If you are 
for instance, saying that it all needs to be redone, they could technically try to get out of that contract because they don't really want to redo all of that work for no pay. So make sure you prepare yourself up front, but give yourself some wiggle room as well because they are interpreting your work in a certain way. The other thing that I did when I was making my list was I let some misreads go. If the misread made sense to the sentence, as they said would instead of could, but the sentence completely still made sense, I didn't ask her to go back to change that. If there was a word missing from a sentence, but it didn't upset the sentence at all, and maybe I should have picked that up on editing, I didn't go back and have her change that. If you are paying, you might want to do that, but it is a collaboration and you do need to give them some artistic license, just as people have let you have artistic license with writing the book in the first place. If it's really that upsetting for you, then maybe this isn't the narrator that you want to go with. And unfortunately, you've wasted both of your times. And the last thing I learned about audiobooks is that audiobooks are a different market than regular or ebooks. As there are a difference between paperback readers and ebook readers, there's a difference between audiobook readers and ebook readers and paperback readers as well. So when I went into this, I was kind of expecting that I would be able to sell my audiobook to anybody who reads books. However, there are people who are exclusive to audiobook. They don't want to read an ebook or a paperback. They don't have time or that's not the way they want to do things. So that is a whole different market, which is fantastic in the sense that you have a completely different market who hasn't seen your work before. However, the marketing plans that you have for your ebooks and your paperback books may not work anymore or may not hit that audience. They have their own reader groups. They are following certain things to get their audiobooks. There's different newsletter services that they use. There's different advertising. There's so many different things that you can do to market your audiobook because it's different than a paperback or ebook. So going into that, I never really thought about it too much. I just figured this was all readers, but they are very different and they like to be catered to differently. So that's something that you're probably going to want to do before you jump into your audiobook or before you launch it to make sure that you are hitting that audiobook market. There is definitely crossover. There's a lot of people who read ebook and who read audiobook. And there is the whisper sync option, which essentially will link the ebook with the audiobook and they can follow along or switch on and off, for instance driving to work, they can listen to the audiobook, and then at lunchtime they can stop wherever they left off and read on their e-reader or on their phone over lunch, and then on their way home it will be stopped where they finished reading and then they can start the audiobook from there. There are those types of people and those people are probably going to be open to either type of marketing, but there are exclusive audiobook readers. So to reach that exclusive audiobook market, you need to think about things a little bit differently before you jump into that. Okay, so those are the lessons I learned from turning my book, Wicked Descent, into an audiobook. It was a very exciting experience and I'm looking forward to putting more of my books into audio, but I'm still trying to figure out which strategy I'm going to use for my next endeavor into audio. If you've ever tried audio or you're an audiobook reader, make sure you're leaving a comment below and tell us all about your experience. If you've tried a paid service or if you've been through ACX before, maybe leave some comments and we can all help each other out. Anyways, that's all I've got for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you are sticking around next week, I will be doing a video on Saturday as well as my regular Thursday video to talk about story structure as part of Wordstock. Wordstock, if you've never heard of it, is a theme that is given out to author tubers and they will all develop a video on the theme. So the theme this year is, or this month, not this year, is story structure and I will be doing a video on dreaded middles. So if middles are your problem, then maybe you should definitely check that out. So hopefully you are enjoying your summertime and if you are working through your Camp NaNoWriMo project, I hope you are doing well. And if you're behind, that's okay. There are many other months in the year where you can catch up. I will see you all next Thursday and you guys have a great week.